In this video I'm going to go through heat treatment which is chapter 2 of the preliminary or year 11 HSE engineering studies course. So uh, to cover, the, we're going to focus on three main heat treatments. So we should have at this point spoken about work hardening. The best example, I just to quickly summarize work hardening is if we talk about um, like a coat hanger, if you bend a, coat, a wire coat hanger back and forth, eventually it will snap. And before it snaps, it actually gets harder. Well, like I said, we should have covered that in more detail um, in a separate video, but uh, that's where we're going to start. Okay. so. There are three main heat treatments. The first thing is we need to know what annealing is. So uh, before we anneal, we want to get to the austenite range. So this is an iron carbon diagram, and you can see above the temperature of 723 degrees, we're going to have some amount of austenite. Where is my austenite song? Okay. Um, okay, so we have some amount of austenite above 723 degrees. At, depending on the carbon content, we, the amount of austenite we'll have is different. At 723 degrees, we're going to get some austenite, unless we have a very low carbon content. But at this number here, at 0.83%, which is an important number, we have pure austenite. Here, we have some alpha and some austenite. Here, we have some austenite and some other stuff called cementite, which we'll talk about in a second. Okay. But austenite only exists at very high temperatures, which is why I always like to touch the picture of austenite. Because it's so hot, right? Austin, so hot, right? Like all these these ladies chasing after him. Anyway, um, okay. So austenite is a face-centered cubic. Just look at his face. Look at those teeth, right? I actually... I actually had to darken those teeth because the photo I had was during one of the scenes where he had good teeth. So I had to like actually make the teeth look more like they did in the movie in Photoshop to give him the coffee, coffee teeth. Okay, so in all of these three heat treatments, we're going to go to austenite first. Austenite is a face-centered cubic. It's sometimes called gamma steel, right? And I remember it as G-A-F because Austin makes a lot of gaffs. A gaff is like a faux pas, it's where you make a mistake and it's embarrassing, right? A gaff. Austin makes a lot of gaffs, he's a face-centered cubic. Now what we're going to learn is that face-centered cubics are ductile. I'm just trying to get to this tab. Okay, I'll just quickly say there's a good video that goes into detail here. Um, I will provide the link in Facebook. Okay, so Austin is ductile. Right, so first of all, whenever we want to reboot steel, we have to go into the austenite range. It's very hot, right? Red hot. That's how hot it is. Red hot. If the steel isn't red, it isn't at austenite yet, right? So heat to red hot, red hot. or another way of writing that, if you wanted to write that quickly, is to say heat to 100% um, gamma steel. If you said heat to red hot, I would usually give that correct, but I don't know if the other HSC markers would. Okay, another term for this is the upper critical temperature plus 50 degrees. The upper critical temperature is anything above that line. So depending on the carbon content, the upper critical temperature could be more than 1,000 degrees, right? 1,200 degrees would be what you want to heat up to for that level of 2% carbon steel. Okay, but back to um, our picture. Okay, we've got three different bond reboots. Yep. Uh, because you want to be safely above the upper critical temperature. You don't want to just be on the crit upper critical temperature. So let's say for the lowest possible grade, which is 0.83% carbon, even though the, the eutectoid point is 723 degrees, you really want to be about 800 degrees, right? I'd say 770, something like that. Okay. Now, how do you produce an uh, um, annealed steel? You guys would have done this in the experiment in the metal workroom, is you just cool it in air. Sorry, sorry. Ah, 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 ah. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I'm not going to edit that. So instead, I'm just going to make it, you know, hit my head like I'm an idiot, right? You cool it in a furnace, in a furnace. Yeah, you cool it slowly in a furnace. And when you do that, you get a much more relaxed steel. So I have this video here because the original bond, right? The original bond, right, is Sean Connery, right? So after Sean Connery, James Bond was replaced with this guy here who is pretty chilled out, right? This guy, he, he's just, he's not edgy. He's not edgy like the original Steel is. He's pretty relaxed, right? Um, he, he takes everything pretty slowly. He has big grains. 
Okay, so then we had another reboot. Now, with all of the reboots, we always have to start with what? What do we have to do to start our reboots? Austinites. So hot. Red hot. Yeah, baby. He's very hot. Okay. Then, this time, what are we going to do to cool it? We're not going to cool it in a furnace. We're going to cool it in air. And when we cool it in air, what do we get? Yep. Later. Um, okay, so when we cool it in air, we get something that's got some stress, a little bit of stress, but definitely much stronger, much harder, and with small uniform grains. Yes, yeah, small grains. Now, then there was another reboot, and this reboot is definitely the edgiest of the three reboots, right? So, first of all, with all of our heat treatments, what do we have to do first? Do, 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 do. Red hot. Yeah, baby. Red hot. Okay. So, we heat to 100% gamma steel or austenite. Right? I write gamma steel because it takes less words and I can't spell it wrong. Right? But austenite, you got to remember it has the word 10 in it because he's a 10 out of 10, right? In the looks department. Okay. Um, the ducts are there because austenite is very ductile. And that makes sense because it's 700 degrees. Yeah? Okay. Then, how do we make, how do we make quench steel? Well, we quench it by dumping it in water, but we don't really use water. We use oil or a salt bath. And when we do that, we get something that is really, really stressed out, right? It's called a sicula, which is Latin for needle-like grains. The grains now shrink to needle, sh needle size. And they're so stressed and brittle that they break, right? A quench sword is no good because a quench sword is so brittle that when you go up and hit the other person with the sword, the sword shatters. And that's pretty embarrassing. A bent sword, you can do something about a bent sword. You can't do something about a shattered sword, right? So a shattered sword is pretty embarrassing. Okay. But then, oh, okay, so I can't show the scene um, because, I don't know, it's a bit graphic. But you guys can find that scene without too much effort. Okay, so he's t so tortured that he's not fit for, for duty, right? Especially by Skyfall. He's, he's no longer fit for duty. He's, he's, been, um, he's been suspended from active field duty. Okay, shh. But you can temper, right? You can temper. And when you temper, you're going to get something that is now quite workable. A tempered sword is good. A tempered sword is good because it's very strong. It's very hard, and hard is good because hard means sharp. We can sharpen it, but not too brittle. And here we have Daniel Craig, right? The edgiest of the, all the bonds. Yes? So when you say heat between 200 and 600 degrees. Yep, that's the tempering process. I have a song for tempering, but we're not quite there yet. So um, I didn't get this one ready. Um, so if you have to quench it before you temper it, or can you temper it without quenching? Can you quench without tempering? Can, uh, can you, you, temper without quenching? you don't want to do either of these on their own, right? It's just it's it's not a useful thing to do on either of their on, on their own. Okay, we're done with with that. Okay, so. We will talk very quickly now about the other kinds of steel. We've said steel is a, um, it has multiple crystal structures, right? We call that polymorphous, right? It's in multiple crystal structures. It can be in an F -centered, a face centered cubic. Look at his face, right? Or it can be a body centered cubic. Now, I have Allison the ferret to help us remember about, um, and Allison the ferret, you can't see from this picture, but she has a pretty good body, right? This picture here, you can see Allison the ferret pretty ripped right anyway um now this diagram i'm only zooming in on one part of the diagram i'm only interested in this part down here but it's important to remember that we don't get to liquid until we're way up in this range right so nothing we're looking at in this range is liquid right if you look at down here we're way down in this small zone can you see how i've kept the same colors but we're down in this small zone um, I wish I'd made the red back this background for Austin red because he's red hot, but you just have to remember that. Now, there's some terminologies we use. I'll get to them very quickly. So we call this V point, we call that a eutectoid. That's Latin for happy, uh, sorry, Greek for happy melting. And the idea is that eutectoid points are the temperature where the phase is lowest. Now, 
normally a eutectoid point is where it becomes liquid the fastest because they, you, the, the Greeks didn't use steel. But in our case, I want to remind you there's no liquid in this diagram. It's all solid. Anyway, so this V point is the eutectoid point. Do you see how it comes together at a V? And what, temp, what percentage does it come to? At 0.83. 0.83, my birthday, I'm born in 1983, and so I call this the Punzit number. My wife, also born in 83, I have a cousin, also in 83, so I figure there's more Punzits born in 83 than any other, especially in Australia, right? I can say definitively more Punzits born in 83 than any other year. So it's the Punzit number, right? So that's a picture of me. Why is there a zebra? Because it looks like a zebra under a microscope, it looks like a zebra, right? Perlite looks like a zebra under the microscope. Okay. If you're to the left of this line, it's called a hypoeutectoid. And that's why I've got the O, hypoeutectoid. If it's to the right of the line, it's a hypereutectoid, which is why it's got the ER on the line. Now we're going to go into that in a bit more detail later, but just to give you an idea, when we talk about hypoeutectoid, it's steel with less than 0.83% carbon. Hypereutectoid has more than 0.83% carbon. If it's like Goldilocks and it's just right, it's going to look like a zebra and it's called perlite. And perlite is a mixture of the ferret and of this other stuff called Fe3C or called, excellent, cementite. Now, I worked with another teacher who did, didn't call it cementite, he called it cementite, right? To help you remember, I have a picture of some semen, right? And that's what, to help you remember that zone, is cementite, right? I did look it up. It's definitely pronounced cementite, right? Definitely. Pre it's also called iron carbide, right? Now, now we're going to go into our next set of um, memes, right? We're now going to go into, this is the same thing, but with far more relevant and important avatar references. So I like to remember it as there's three different forms of heat treatment. Fire, air, water, right? They are the th And they go in the avatar cycle. Fire, so we've got avatar Roku. Air, we've got Aang, right, with small equiax grains. And we have um, Korra. Korra is, is the waterbender, right? Obviously, they can all bend all of the element elements, but, you know, because they're the avatar. Anyway, if you haven't seen Avatar, check it out. It's still on Netflix. Fantastic. Uh, it's my second favorite TV show. Okay, we're going to start with annealing. Now, when I start with annealing, I always like to start by saying aloha to Neil, right? It helps me to remember that, you know, aloha, Neil. Let me tell you about my mate, Anil. Right, Neil, Neil lives in Hawaii. And Hawaii, they say in ancient Hawaiian tradition, this is not true, this is me just telling you a story to help you remember, that the volcanoes were the furnaces of the gods. Yeah? The volcano were the v furnace of the gods. And there's a lot of furnaces in Hawaii, or a lot of vo volcanoes. And so, in Hawaii, I've never been to Hawaii, but I'm led to believe that in Hawaii, everything happens slowly. Right? Everyone's pretty chilled out in Hawaii. And, again, haven't been to Hawaii, but I'm led to believe that Neil and the other, some other Hawaiians, not all, but some other Hawaiians, are larger fellows. This is to help you to remember that in Hawaii, we have low stress, soft, big equiaxed grains. Yeah? Now, what is an example of something that's, uh, that's annealed? Pineapple tins are annealed. Yeah? After they make the pineapple tin, they anneal them so that they're nice and soft and tough. So that if you drop them on the ground, they don't spill everywhere. Yeah? They don't break. They don't shatter. They dent. They don't shatter. Yeah? So that's why we anneal canned food. So it doesn't dent. It, sh it, it dents. It doesn't shatter. Yeah? Okay. So this is a recommendation to watch Avatar. It's a fantastic show. Right? Lots of furnaces. Or sorry, I mean volcanoes in Hawaii. They're relaxed. Low stress, so everything happens slowly, you cool slowly, right? Big equiax grains. Okay, hopefully Disney doesn't copy strike that. Okay, now 
we're going to go to something a little bit harder, a little bit stronger. So we're going to go to my French band Daft Punk. We could have gone to another French band, Air, and I'm a big fan of Air, but when I played this as a re re revision with my uh, Year 12s, they said that it sounded like it was elevator music. So there is a Kanye version of this song, which is a better song, but it has too many swears. Anyway, but what we're going to work on here is first of all we have to heat to 100% austenite. Red hot austenite. So hot. Not a liquid, but very, very hot. Then we have to cool it. How are we going to cool it? In still air. Yeah, we're going to cool it in air. Now, what's that going to result in? Aang has small equiax grains, right? But don't worry, he's only a kid, right? Um, and then. What is the result? Stronger, better, faster, harder. Okay. I don't even think I said them in the right order, right? <laughs> There's You can watch Daft Hands where they do the entire song with their hands, right? If you haven't seen this, it's pretty funny. Anyway, and as it starts to get to like the bridge where it's... Okay, uh, there's also one where like two girls, two girls do it. They're, they're, this is pretty good as well. Um, they do it as like a dance move, but I haven't got that here. Now there's another video on um, annealing, and uh, actually it's on all of all three, but I, I have it at the normalizing process, so you can see the difference between these grain structures. It goes through, and you can see an example, and you can see that the grains are smaller. Uh, anyway. It's a pretty good video. It's not maybe not as good as the Irish video, but I'm going to recommend this one. So anyway, this is why we've got Kanye. We've got these people. They're transforming, right? That whole video, if you watch the uh, Daft Punk video, they're actually aliens. They're music aliens who get kidnapped by an evil producer and they get transformed into humans and then they have to get forced to make music for these evil humans. Anyway, what is the result, right? Smaller, better, stronger, faster, right? It's cooled faster. Now, um... That's my normal. Where we use normalizing? Everywhere is where we use normalizing. This video here gives a pretty good example. So after you shape things, right, that's a form of cold working. And when you shape things, you're going to have uneven grains. You're going to have distorted grains from cold working, right? You get to see how these grains are longer and distorted, right? They're e elongated grains. Whereas what we want to do is normalize. By normalize, we're going to have equiaxed right? All of the grains are going to be the same size, more or less, right? And we're going to have an even equal sized grains. And that's a good thing. It gives us strength, right? It gives us strength without points of weakness, right? It gives us strength without points of weakness. Um, and those small equiax grains are a good thing. So yeah, I, I, anyway, I, I've skipped through the video. You guys can watch that video later. Okay. Next one, finally, we're going to have the third of the three avatars in our cycle. So what we're going to uh, copy image address. We'll go here. Okay. So we start off with Cora. Cora is a waterbender, right? Where she started off as a waterbender. And she comes across as a bit of a spoiler. She comes across against this guy, um, Zaheer. Zaheer is um, voiced by Henry Rollins. He has a great song about being a liar. It's a very good song. Anyway, so. This guy is here. He um he doesn't like the idea of avatars, so he wants to end avatars. So what he does is he quenches her in oil, right? And this oil is a bad oil, and she is not happy about this oil. Anyway, after she manages to survive this encounter, right? She is not in a good way, right? She she isn't on active avatar duty anymore. She's like just you know picking fights on the street, and she cuts her hair and all sorts of things, right? She ha she's having a bad time, right? She's actually paralyzed for a while. Anyway, but she gets back up. Great song. Great song. You've got to check it out later. Okay. Anyway, she's not having a great time, old uh, Cora. Anyway, but then she goes for a bit of a run. Right, gets a clear, gets outside, clears ahead, right, 
heats up to about 200 and 600 degrees for some amount of time depending on the carbon content oh she's already pretty tough i gotta say you gotta have more than um like you gotta have a high carbon content at least 0.6 percent carbon to be able to temp be um tempered right you can't quench temper a um someone with low carbon content right they 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 you know they don't they just can't they don't no change right they they anyway but she goes for a bit of a run clears her head right anyway clears her head feeling better about things 200 to 600 degrees some amount of time you don't need to learn that I like how the girls come past and they're all clean. Like, these guys are all muddy and, you know... There you go. Anyway, um, we'll put that in the background. Okay, so she's still a acicular, right? Still the same grain shape, still a acicular, but now... Oh, I'm like, I'm, I'm even like a little, you know, teary just thinking about... It. Now, look at her. I mean, like, she is a force to be reckoned with. She is very hard, very strong, not too brittle. Right now, she is a fully realized, fully fledged avatar, right? Okay, so, quickly, uh, to, to quickly revise, all three processes, the first thing we need to do is what? The first thing we need to do is austenite, right? We have to get to 100% austenite. How do we get to 100% austenite? We heat it above the upper critical temperature at least 50 degrees the upper critical temperature is this line the lowest upper critical temperature is 723 degrees but it could be a lot higher depending on the carbon content what color is austenite red hot still a solid very ductile but incredibly hot does not exist at room temperature right austenite does not exist at room temperature then when you cool it right when you cool it you then, depending on how you call it, you're going to get different things. You're either going to get normalized steel, annealed steel, or tempered steel, or you're going to get a secular martensite, right? So let's go through the process. If you used fire or a furnace and you cool slowly, what are we going to get? Fire and a furnace, we're going to get, we're going to get aloha neal, we're going to get big neal. Big neal, slow, relaxed, likes pineapples, right? If you cool quickly in air, what are you going to get? Work it faster, do it better, stronger, faster. I'm, I'm, I know that was terrible and it's not the right words. Anyway, <laughs> what do we get? What's that one? Normalizing. Normalizing, right? Aang, he's kind of the normal avatar, right? Yeah, anyway, maybe that helps you. Right, some Kanye references in there as well. Okay, how do we quench? To quench, we, we put it in what? Yeah, some sort of water, right? Water, oil, salt, something like that, right? And what do we get? What does it produce? It produces martensite. And martensite is acicular. Okay, so we've talked about body-centered cubic. We've talked about face-centered cubic. Actually, I pressed the wrong. Yeah, okay. So what we go from is face-centered cubic. Look at his face. His face is so messed up. His face, look at those teeth, right? To the ferret, right? The ferret, who's got a good body, right? But if we cool too quickly, it can't go from face center cubic to body center cubic. Instead, it goes to this intermediate called BCT, body centered tetragonal, right? And body centered tetragonal, it is totally stressed and distorted, right? It's it's got heaps of stress in it, right? And it's brittle. So well, what we can do is we can remove some of that stress from those needle-like or acicular grains, and we can remove that stress by what process? by i've closed the song by tempering our love was lost anyway they have other songs but this is my favorite song tempest trap that the other one was the they have other yeah that was um sweet bit disposition it's okay it's just not as good anyway okay so what do we call the um what we're looking for is this okay so we have some different grain structures right the different grain structures are Austenite is a face-centered cubic, right? Because his face, his teeth. Ferrite, the ferrite her, ferret has a great body, right? Body-centered cubic. There's also cementite, Fe3C, which we could say is a, um, it's like a covalent compound, right? But it has this 
structure. It doesn't. We don't all memorize its structure. The point is, I spent a long time looking for its structure. It doesn't have a. It doesn't have. It's a, like a. You don't need to worry about its structure. I think is the key here. Okay. Um, I do have another link to help you remember the face. Right about you said where some anyway. Don't worry. Um, I have a audio of all of this recorded for Year Twelves. It talks about a few more heat treatments, but um. Really, for year 11, this is pretty solid. If you guys can remember those three things, if you can remember, fire is... Fire is annealing. Aloha, Neil. Right? Um, it, it, we have air is normalizing. Yeah, stronger, better, harder, faster. Right? And we have quenching is water. Yeah, oil or water or brine. And it is very brittle. A secular martin site is very brittle. But we make it workable. We can put it and actually use it if we temper it, right? So we heat it up to a lower temperature, below the critical temperature for some amount of time, up to usually 200 to 700 degrees. It only works for high carbon steel. I think that's a pretty uh, thorough revision of heat treatment, and this should cover you for all of chapter two and heat treatment pretty much for year 11 until we get to aluminium and stainless steel. I. If you had a, uh, is a question related to this before yeah, I so start recording? So yeah. We don't go into the details of tempering. You don't need to know the details of tempering. That video I showed you, it did talk about the effect of tempering, but is, is we don't see a difference in its structure. It still stays needle-like, and all we see is that it removes it removes brittleness with only removing a little bit of strength. So the end result is very strong, very hard which means it can be sharpened, good for blades, but with only losing a little bit of that, um, sorry, yeah, loses lots of the brittleness. So it means it can, doesn't shatter. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, guys.